safe streets, vibrant neighborhoods, successful business and commerce. These are things that make a healthy community. We are a diverse community, rural, suburban, urban, a multitude of languages and ethnicities, ages and experiences. We are a collaborative community. Public-private partnerships make us a model community that others want to follow. It is what makes us unique. It is what makes us strong. The employees of Kent County reflect our diversity and seek to serve our communities. People in this county, in this area, we wrap our arms around each other. We come together to collaborate, to solve problems. Um, we're all working for the good of the whole. And I think that's wonderful. And you can see it. You can see it as you drive around Kent County. Our impact starts the day a baby is born and a birth certificate is issued, to protecting children from deadly diseases through vaccination, to the public safety and justice provided by law enforcement and the courts, to offering veterans services and caring for the elderly. Every day we work to keep our communities robust. I think if you are somebody who is interested in serving your community, in building a strong knowledge base and a good group of people to work with, then the county is one of your best employment opportunities out there. It's been completely rewarding in every way I could possibly explain for 26 years and I feel like I grow every single day still today. Leading these dedicated employees are 19 member Board of Commissioners and our County Administrator Controller, along with our elected officials and appointed department directors, placing emphasis on civic involvement, quality housing, vibrant neighborhoods, and strong, solid infrastructure to allow businesses to thrive. Professional, dedicated, collaborative, and innovative. Behind the scenes, collaboration between foundations, charitable organizations, nonprofits, for-profit businesses, public sector demonstrated through the county, the city of Grand Rapids, the townships, all the cities and the villages in our area. If we don't come together, then we will not have the strength that we have today, and I only hope to build upon that. Our aim is to make our communities the best they can be. We are involved in exciting development projects, sustainable recycling programs, and creative progressive prevention programming. We partner with elected officials, impacting policy ideas that become great achievements. We seek opportunities to reach out into the community and offer our services to help our residents make Kent County thrive. Our relationship um, is solid, um, both from a staff standpoint at the county level, as well as the Board of Commissioners. And um, they understand what we do and the benefits that we can do for the community. And vice versa, we couldn't do what we do without the help of Kent County. While most of us are busy running our lives, Kent County's elected officials, administrator controller, and over 1,600 employees are serving the communities where we live our lives, so we can all have a place we are proud to call home. Kent County, it's life well run. Pumpkin needs cream cheese. Ooh, that's bad. Okay. Good morning and welcome to the Finance and Physical Resources Committee meeting of Tuesday, June 4th at is 8.30. It is my pleasure to welcome fellow commissioners, staff, guests who are meeting this morning. Thank you so much for taking your time out of your day to come. I'll start with public comment. Is there any public that would like to make any comment today for the Physical and Finance Resources Committee? Okay, seeing none, I will close public comment and that will bring us to the consent agenda. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Support. Moved and supported. Is there anything that's to be pulled? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor of approving the consent agenda, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The motion passes. That brings us to item number three from the health department. And we have Matthew this morning instead of Wayman. So Matthew. All right. Uh, this is to recommend to the Board of Commissioners to approve an amendment to the existing memorandum of understanding with the City of Grand Rapids for the Lead Hazard Control Community Development Program accept and appropriate $100,000 to the 2018-19 health fund budget and to authorize the board chair or designee to execute the grant agreement, approve extensions, amendments, and increase the grant appropriation not to exceed 15% of the original award. Um, the city of Grand Rapids has made $100,000 available to the health department through its lead hazard community development grant. 
to conduct a community awareness campaign about the hazards of lead exposure in children using digital, print, billboard, and bus advertisements. The target population is Medicaid families and residing in zip codes 49507, 49504, and 49503. Uh, to support the work required by the grant, the health department will receive $100,000 to cover the cost of the staffing, promotional, and media campaigns, and overhead costs. And the agreement period is June 1, 2019 through September 30, 2019. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Support. All right. Moved and supported. And we'll have questions, comments, and discussion. Yes, Commissioner Morgan. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, this, it says... Uh, in, in the, it comes from the community development uh, grant. Is that part of, is that a HUD grant or is? Let's have uh, Teresa maybe answer that question because it's coming from the city, so. Morning, commissioners. Good morning. Um, yes, this grant is part of the HUD grant and there are some additional dollars and that were be able to be allocated um, to focus specifically on an education campaign. Well, congratulations, because we were wondering if we could access some of that money uh, months ago when we first started talking about um, trying to get some collaboration with other, you know, funding sources. This is one of our, one of our targets. So uh, congratulations. Thank you. And that same funding um, in partnership between the city of Grand Rapids and Kent County was used early on to fund one of the sanitarium positions, not the most recent two that was approved by the commissioner. So it's great to have that additional funding to focus on education. Just a reminder for the commissioners, if you didn't see the memo, there is a mic change. You can press your mic. You don't have to hold it. And then you press again and it turns off. So I think that would make things more pleasant. Okay, for everyone. Just figured I'd tell everybody. All right, I have uh, Commissioner Bukowski next, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you, Teresa, for this. Um, and, and moving things forward, I, I concur with uh, Commissioner Morgan. It's good to be in collaboration, um, especially when it comes to movement of dollars. Um, my couple of questions um, relate to um, who's in charge and, and how are we going to measure the impact of these dollars. Um, I won't talk about the, the semi-funny um, placement of the dependent clause where it says the hazards of lead exposure in children using digital stuff. It seems like the lead hazards in the digital materials. Um, that being said, um, you know, just the impact of $100,000, who's really going to watch it? Uh, you know, a couple weeks ago, we had a pretty impactful group of parents and grandparents here, and, and it's like... <coughs> If they went door to door for probably a fraction of this cost, um, I got nothing against bus advertisement, but who, who's really measuring the impact of this? And to me, 100000 is real money. Yes, you know, that's, that's real money. And one of the lead task force recommendations was to focus specifically on education and outreach. And when that recommendation was in there, we weren't sure how that was going to be funded. But at the health department, um, we are going after any uh, funding opportunity that we can to help meet those lead task force recommendations. So to answer the first question in terms of who's in charge, I really do see lead as a community problem that's going to call on multiple community agencies to address that issue in our community and ultimately eliminate that issue in our community um, to the best of our ability. Um, both the lead task force, um, the subcommittee that was charged, the Community Health Advisory Committee, I think is the watchdog for uh, the accountability parts and making sure that not just the education outreach takes place, but the work that is um, to be done by the approved sanitarians and doing the lead investigations, monitoring that work, also monitoring those gaps in the lead task force recommendation where funding is would still be needed to really eliminate um, and address those risks in the 49503, 49504, and 49507 uh, zip codes, as well as to identify those other um, communities throughout Kent County with um, homes that have um, lead. So ultimately, the accountability on that, I think, does reside with uh, some of those gatekeepers, um, both between the city of Grand Rapids, uh, Kent County Health Department, uh, and absolutely, you know, the voices of the communities that are impacted are very powerful in helping to tell the story and 
around the lead issue in Kent County, which is very different than other communities. Um, the 49507 uh, zip code leads in the state, which is not something to be proud of, but it is something that um, we should all be um, very mindful of in recognizing um, the significant problem that we have in our community there. And then with the, uh, in terms of the impact of the 100,000, um, we realized that that could be um, scratching the surface. Um, it is, like you said, real money that we're going to do the best that we can in a short duration of time. This grant is from um, June 1st through the end of our fiscal year. So we'll be, a uh, majority of those dollars will be contracted out to really get some very targeted messaging to those uh, neighborhoods. And um, hopefully the consultant that we use um, our goal is that they will be talking to people in the community to help drive that message, as well as talking to people in public health to make sure that people understand what those risks and hazards are. So we will be measuring impact um, through multiple ways. Um, uh, there's terminology with um, some geofencing, which relates to how are we going to capture those messages at the neighborhood level to make sure that they resonate, to make sure that we have um, staff that are doing some community engagement, to make sure that the individual, not just the individuals, but the, um, the owners and uh, uh, different businesses are also aware of things that um, can be done as well to mitigate those risks. I don't know if it's too far in the weeds for us, but when 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 would it's we? It's never too far in the weeds. No, I mean I mean down ahead. down the Commissioner road, in, down the road in the sense of when when do we see that? You know, because again, I got I got nothing against the folks that are out there making their money on billboards, for example. But there was another public entity in town that was bragging up they had 12 million impressions, and like 11.5 million impressions was a billboard on 131. Mm -hmm because 100,000 vehicles see it every day. And it's like, really? You know, and, and people still buy billboards, so they right. must be impactful. Mm -hmm. However, again, I mean, some of us have a little experience on campaigning, i.e. all of us. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the most impactful stuff is door to door. Right. And so, again, I, I mean, again, for $100,000 in three months, four months, to really, I mean, we, how many times could we knock every door? Right, and I think that's, but, you know, one of the uh, position um, requests in the lead task force was a, a health educator, somebody who could go out and do the education door to door. That is not um, a position that we have funding to support. It is a position that we do plan to request um, through the uh, early childhood millage, um, because you're right, we do need people to go door to door to do that. Um, the other thing with the um, city of Grand Rapids funding for the awareness campaign, some of there were some things in there that were prescribed that we had to do with those funding in order to get a proposal approved. So part of that was multimedia, multi-digital. Um, two videos um, also had to be produced. So I'm hopeful that um, these grant funds that we will be able to get again that community voice to help inform through video that we can put out there. Um, to individuals in those communities. All right, thank you so much. Welcome. Commissioner Antor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, I, I kind of have the same concerns. It seems like um, $100,000. It sounds like even pigeonholed a little bit, you have to spend it this way, even though it doesn't necessarily make sense to some of us. Um, and that's been the problem with the CDBG over the years. Sometimes it's, um, you know, they're looking at this big broad picture instead of what, what we need here specifically. And I buy billboards, and billboards are great for uh, marketing a huge event where, because, you know, when you're trying to market everybody in West Michigan, that works. Mm -hmm. But here you got three area codes, and we're buying billboards. Um, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But <coughs> the big picture, I guess, is the most important thing. We're trying to do our best, and I understand the restrictions that you have, and that's why we have to have these billboards. But I'd rather see the 100000 go door to door continuously until we run out of money, I guess. But... Mm -hmm. And, you know, with the RFP that we're putting out there, you know, we provided some specifications for those uh, vendors. Um, so we'll, we will be reviewing what those vendors have in there. And if there is opportunity for that, we will carve some funds out. Um, again, the health department, even prior to the 100000 we had applied for some funding. Um, and I don't think we've heard yet on a notice of award on that. But those funds were specifically going to target 
exactly what you're talking about, that door-to-door -door, um, and really um, letting um, what we hear in the community drive what that message is. Um, we've done that with some other successful um, campaigns um, through the Racial Ethnic Approaches to Community Health Grant where we put out an RFP, we consulted with a company, and we launched a campaign called Get Real. But it was all very community-driven, community-focused, um, and I think that the messages that came out of there are having impact well beyond the um, purchase of those services. So, Listen, don't take any of this the wrong way. I appreciate all your yes. work. I know it can be yeah. frustrating sometimes, but thank Absolutely. you for all the work you've done. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Wooden. Most of uh, my comments were echoed by Commissioners Antor and Bolkowski, but I'll, I'll just echo again that I think um, as direct an approach we can and measure whether it's through when people come into our health department for uh, lead hazard services uh, or lead treatment, figuring out if they saw any advertisement that we've given and what in particular so we can test that. Um, and also um, you know, utilizing as messengers those with that lived experience, I think, is just way too important uh, for the success of this grant. And, and lastly, just a clarifying point, the reason that we can accept the city CDBG in this process is because we're focusing on the city zip codes, that if we wanted to expand this outside, we would likely have to either find our own county resources, whether that be early childhood millage dollars or our own CDBG budget, correct? Um, yes, and with within our... Um um, budget with the, at the health department with our marketing communications manager there are some creative things that we probably can do that I'm sure we can do um, to um, extend this work beyond there and beyond those zip codes and even though these are the focus of the dollars it doesn't um, prohibit us from um, sharing that message beyond the confines of those but these are the zip codes that were disproportionately affected so. makes sense thank you mm -hmm. okay. Commissioner Sparks Thank you so much, uh, Chair. I, I appreciate what you're doing uh, and what you're trying to do. And I know that it, it, so, it sounds like a lot of money, $100,000, but when you're trying to reach, you know, hundreds of thousands of people, um, I don't like this. I, I, and, and I don't know a, a better way to, to say it other than the contract and the layers cost us more money is what happens. So what we're doing is we're contracting this person and then we're uh, paying this person and within the layers when that money could be better utilized for, and you, we can't help it, it looks mm -hmm. like, looks like it's something that, but being intentional um, with the dollars, are there going to be events that they're going to be at? I know we have some events downtown, especially with the African American uh, community and different events that are going on where we could use some of this money for the promotional, um, I guess with the staffing, because I think that you're able to use the money for both of those. So not just the digital print billboard and the bus, but also for the staffing, promotional, and media campaigns and overhead costs. Is that correct? That is correct. And again, our hope is with whatever is um, designed and developed out of there, that we have staff that are all, all across Kent County, both that we can get the messages in the homes through home visit programs, that we can have our health educators out at community events sharing these messages. Um, environmental health staff, so across the, um, our department, um, we have a number of people that can get the message out and be present at those events. Um, with these dollars, we have to get the message um, developed so that we can get it out into those neighborhoods and community events. Is, and, and I don't want to get stuck in the weeds on it either. I don't know that this is our role, but is there a way that we could look at that messaging before it goes out? Because sometimes I find that um, with government, they kind of miss the mark on the messaging um, because they're either over-targeting one population or not targeting, not, not targeting them enough or making the message um, so it's something that they're willing to listen to. Commissioner Sparks, yeah, oh, I think um, traditionally we'd take care of that, uh, handling the message part, um, mm -hmm. but definitely we can consult with Jack and others to get input into that, and then it's be the health department's role to to carry that forward. Okay. So, but um, we can um, talk to you a little bit about that afterwards and get okay. some thoughts you might have to help us as we lay that Sorry. out. Sorry. No, that's okay. Just, I just really want it to be you know impactful because sure. We've got the money here, but it's it's going to go quickly. Mm -hmm. And if we don't have the right messaging, we're going to skip it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
that and would be helpful. If I may, the health department for the past three years, we established under Adam London's charge a material review committee. So there's okay. not, even when we contract with different companies, there's not one message, no matter what um, medium it's in, if it's a billboard, if it's uh, whatever the theme of the campaign is, print material, that goes through a material review committee that's checking the material. Uh, or video for message content, cultural relevancy. There's like five different areas and a checklist that we use. So we run that through that committee before any of the messages are finalized. You're welcome. Commissioner Womack. Yes, thank you. And I definitely appreciate the health department work on this Kent County and the city of Grand Rapids. But uh, following Mrs. Sparks' comment about messaging, my question was along those lines. What are the bullet points? Because what distinguishes the TV, radio, and digital advertising from the billboard is that billboard, you're only really going to see basically the title and if you're lucky, a number when you're passing by. So most billboards have three to five words that they really want to put in your head. So um, do you know what are the top three uh, bullet points that are in this messaging? And we don't. Because if, if they chose uh, billboards, I would believe they would have to already have some messaging in mind because there's only so much you could fit on there. Thank you, John. I have Joanne Hogan, Center Community Wellness Director. Good morning, Commissioners. Thank you for having us here today. Yes, I sat on the group that um, is working toward getting a contract to do this, and the main message that we're trying to get, one primary message, is hidden dangers. So two words, hidden dangers, and they're focusing in on individuals who don't recognize that there is lead in their home, so they're not testing and they're not protecting their children because they don't know. So hidden dangers with pictures of things like windowsills, chipping paint, um, old houses that might be blighted and recognizing that those uh, houses are dangerous to children. So the big focus is both on the written um, you know, pamphlets and flyers and things like that as well as billboards is that there are hidden dangers in homes with just those two words, hidden dangers. When you're using the billboards, you know, we're talking about communication and after communication, connectivity. Um, how do we expect to, or are we trying to put the message about the hidden dangers in the lead, or are we tr also trying to have some connectivity back to the health department and other resources that can help these families. You bet. One of the topics that we uh, made sure that we included in this campaign was we have to give the community something actionable, something to do with it, not just letting them know that there's hidden dangers, but now what do I do that I know this? And so there will be a connection back to the health department and our grants program that allow us to investigate the homes and also to connect them with resources to get the lead abated in their homes. And um, I'm on a committee with the mayor and um, for lead, and she has a great group of people. And I've also seen our Kent County Task Force is uh, comprised of a great group of people. But when it comes to actually talking to those citizens that are being effective, do they have any input on this messaging or how do we have any focus groups with the direct community? Because we have like rock the block this weekend in the 49507. We have the African American Arts Festivals. Uh, we have the June Festival, Festival of Arts, where we're going to have everybody from every <laughs> part of this, this county here in Grand Rapids. Do we have, are we connecting with those grassroots efforts, events, as Mrs. Sparks said, and are we having focus groups? with the people that could tell us the best way to make sure we connect with them? The answer to the, both of those questions is yes, we are. We have a table at uh, Rock the Block, and we will have someone from our lead team um, at the table passing out literature and letting people know what the resources are in the community and giving them the opportunity to sign up for a lead inspection in their home. Regarding um, the contract uh, around the um, educational and outreach campaign, in, built in the contract is that we are requiring that they do a focus group once they've developed the product to bring in members of the community and test it first on those individuals, it's getting what is their impression, is this compelling, is this make you want to act, and if the answer is yes, we'll move forward. If the answer is no, we'll revisit it until it becomes that product that we hope will be truly impactful. 
Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, Commissioner Morgan. Thank you, Madam Chair. I never thought we'd get out of the weeds <laughs> there. Um, as a policy, I think this is a good policy. I uh, have a 100% confidence that they're going to uh, go ahead and and roll this program out. So as a matter of policy, my vote is yes. Okay. All right. Anyone else? Yes, Commissioner Sparks. I just want to say I don't, I don't, it's not that we're not agreeing on the policy. It's that this affects our community. I mean, in the people in our community. So we want to make sure that they're being taken care of. Yeah, That's we're it. we're not a working board. We're we're a policy board. So, and I have confidence that our staff will be able to handle this. So I'm saying. Okay, Commissioner Womack. And I, of course, I will definitely be supporting this, as I know Mrs. Sparks will be. Um, we will definitely be supporting it. Um, being voted in from the 49507, which has the highest lead in the in the county. Um, I became a voice for that community, the first candidate to run on Get the Lead Out. Um, I'm very confident that we will be effective because that's only one component of all the great things that are happening around lead, but we do have to go in this understanding. We have not been effective. And that's not putting it on health department or this program, but getting this whole county getting the state involved, getting federal involvement. Our county, our city does not have the help we need from the state and the federal yet. Neither does Flint, Michigan. We have to understand that what we're fighting is a, it's a major task that took decades for us to get into and we're the generation. So thanks to you, you and everybody that's working on it because this is the generation that's making up for all the generations that overlook lead. So um, I'm very supportive of everybody and appreciate everything, but we have to understand that what we're up against is a giant monster. And our community looks at it like sometimes we're throwing spitballs at it, but we have to do that. And I, I'm a voice in our community that lets them know that these organizations that are working on it need to be appreciated because they're not the ones who made this problem. But that's why you will hear from me and Mrs. Sparks, uh, you know, questions to make sure we're doing the best we can. So we're just trying to help and we will be supporting it. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? All right, seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The motion passes. Okay, before we go to item agenda four, just another reminder of right now, if everyone can look at their blue lights, your blue light should be off. So if your blue light isn't off, please press your button again. Okay, so it's blue light on when you're speaking, blue light off when you're not, and it's one press. So you don't have to hold anymore. One press. Now with that, let's go to item number four. Matthew. Okay, this is a recommendation um, about the Nurse Family Partnership expansion. Uh, recommend to the Board of Commissioners to add two full-time public health nurse positions and convert one part-time clerk two position to full-time and to accept and appropriate $225,000 of funding to the 2018-19 health fund budget. The Michigan Department of Health and Human Services has made $225,000 available through the Comprehensive Planning, Budgeting, and Contracting Agreement to expand the Nurse Family Partnership Program to reach high-risk population that currently is not being served by the NFP program. The NFP program provides intensive services to first-time low-income mothers in high-risk areas of the county. The program's primary focus is to enroll minority women and help them improve skills in the areas of maternal and child physical health, education and employment, family and friend support, and preventing child abuse and neglect. To support the work uh, required by the expansion of NFP, two full-time um, public health nurse positions will be created, and a current .6 FTE clerk typist two position will be converted to a 1.0 FTE position. The annual cost of the salary and benefits for the two nurse positions and the conversion of the clerk to typist position to full time is $166,877 and $28,564 respectively. The remaining $29,000 will be used to cover costs of required training, supplies, uh, mileage, and indirect costs. If the grant is eliminated or decreased, the positions will be eliminated unless continuation funding is approved pursuant to the policy on grants, contracts, and donations. And this item was recommended for approval by the LHR committee at its May 28, 2019 meeting. 
Thank you, Matthew. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Okay, moved and supported, and we will do questions, comments, and discussion. Yes, Commissioner Antor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, out of that $225,000, um, this is all going to be used for services and not outreach um, or trying to locate? And we'll have um, uh, Joanne Cook. Hi, Joanne. That. Good morning again, commissioners. I'm Joanne Hokinson, Director of Community Wellness at the Health Department. Yes, all of this will, will provide services to first-time low-income moms in the community. Um, we're not going to, we, built into the program is outreach. So all of the nurses have to do some outreach on a regular basis, but right now we have a waiting list. Okay. So we're not really going to be emphasizing too much outreach because uh, the services are needed, they're valued by the community, and uh, if we had more nurses, we could be serving more people today. So it, we won't spend too much time on outreach. But I also want to point out that a new um, effort is coming to town called Help Me Grow, coming to Kent County. It's through the Great Start Collaborative, and the goal of that effort is to connect um, families with resources. So we would anticipate with the launching of Help Me Grow that our waiting list will just get longer because there'll be more people connected with more resources. And we would like to be in a position where we can service um, many more families instead of turning people away. Okay, thanks, Joanne. Mm -hmm. Yes, Commissioner Wooden. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, going, not to get back into the weeds of the previous discussion, but we've talked a lot about needing to integrate care and how often things get siloed. Since we're going to be talking with first-time mothers, is, is lead health going to be part of the education component that our nurses are going to be working with them on? The Nurse Family Partnership Program, as well as the MIHP program, has different domains that are required that they touch um, it with every family. Uh, some of them are real popular, like relationships. Some of them are less popular, like safety and car seats and mm -hmm. vaccines. Moms don't love to talk about those things, but we have to. And on that list is safety within the home, and that includes um, lead. Thank you. Commissioner Womack? I just want to tell you I appreciate you and Teresa's work. Thank you. Thank you. And we appreciate our commissioners, too. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. That brings us to item number five. Matthew? This is a request to the Board of Commissioners to add one full-time weatherization and housing specialist, one, accept and appropriate $737,000 to the Kent County Community Action Fund, and to authorize the board chair designee to execute the documents related to the funds and approve extensions, amendments, and increases to the grant appropriation not to exceed 15% of the original award contingent upon receipt of award and execution of a contract. Um, the Kent County C Community Action has received a notification of its pending allocation of funding from the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services as part of the Department of Energy's Weatherization Assistance Program. This marks the 46th consecutive year of funding, which began in 1973. KCCA has weatherized over 8,100 dwellings since its inception of the program and expect, expects to add 75 units dwellings with this funding. The grant includes funding for administrative, supportive, and technical training expenses, as well as funding for labor materials, health and safety measures installed in customers' dwellings. For the new grant period, July 1 through June 30, 2020, Community Action will receive $119,000 increase in funding from its current grant. The cost of the new weatherization specialist one position is $70,000, and the increased grant funds will be used to co cover the cost of the new position. This position is designed to improve service delivery and allow for succession planning within the weatherization assistance program, since technical certifications can take between two and four years to obtain. If the grant funding is eliminated or decreased, the position will be eliminated unless continuation funding is approved pursuant to the policy on grants, contracts, and donations. And again, this item was recommended for approval by the LHR committee at its May 28, 2019 meeting. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Support. Okay, moved and supported, and we will have questions, comments, and discussion. Yes, Commissioner Wooden. Just a quick question. Um, with the weatherization program, we're working to use this as a leveraging source to ensure that anything that our friends in the utilities that have their energy optimization program uh, can, can match together, 
correct? Or are we working at all to see if we can uh, bring in energy optimization dollars to go alongside weatherization dollars to maximize input? Good morning. Yes, we are. Um, we're doing that through our uh, partners with Clear Result. Um, and um, part of that is through Consumers Energy and DTE. Thank you. Yes, Commissioner Antor. Thank you, Madam Chair. I was just wondering, what, uh, Matthew, do you know what uh, we had last year for this, the amount of money? Is this an increase over last year? It was 610000 Okay. So we have more money to allocate in this position. <laughs> are we replacing someone, or is this? This will be an ad. Okay. This is an additional position. I was just curious about that because... Um, we're not that much further up as far as the amount of money, but we're adding a position to allocate it. Um, was that something we were lacking last year? Was enough manpower, I guess? Um, currently, the weatherization program is growing, um, not only through the state, but federally. Federally, it was awarded $33 million more million this year. It was one of the only programs that we operate that received more money. And um, the... People in weatherization, including myself, are getting old, and it takes two to four years to become certified with all of the um, trainings and everything that you have to do. So we have to start planning for the succession of this program because there's um, three of us that are, um, you know, on that side <laughs> of the slope. So we have to start training people now and getting people interested. And we also need help um, finding contractors because our contractors are getting old too. And so the program, whether it's very popular federally and state, we need some help with you know, building it up so it will continue because some of the contractors and some of the people that I have right now have been with us for 30, 40 years. Okay, so it wasn't a requirement to have an additional staff member. It's just a necessity at this point. Necessity. And that kind of goes in line with what we're seeing out there right now as far as, yes, our contractors are getting older in all the trades, and there's no way really coming in to fill that void, which is going to be a huge problem. And there's a lot of opportunity for people that want to, you know, get into that type of work for right. sure. And we've been trying really hard to find some contractors, like through the Home Builders Association with um, GRCC. They had classes. Um, during ARA, it was a big push to get people trained. Um, so we, we keep looking for avenues in which to find people. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes, Commissioner Sparks. Just want to say thank you so much for all your work and support there. Um, you've been with us for a long time and doing this for a long time. I had the opportunity to go uh, with Commissioner Melton and sit and watch um, and ex get explained about KCCA with uh, Susan this past week. So she's doing an amazing job. Thank you. Thank you. She really cares. Okay, anyone else? All right, seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The motion passes. That brings us to Commissioner Miscellaneous. Is there any Commissioner Miscellaneous this morning? Yes, Commissioner Brevi. Thank you, Chair. I just wanted to thank you all for supporting those three action requests. You know, a little goes a long way, and those each are different steps in helping our community be um, free from lead. So I think, you know, this and then many other people are working in the community too. So I think these are great opportunities and I appreciate all the, you know, thoughtfulness that you guys have, the questions and concerns. Um, we have a great bunch of people at the health department working on it. Um, lots of good partners too. So thanks for all the support. Commissioner Bukowski. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, just uh, since Commissioner Hennessy isn't here on finance anymore, um, tomorrow, not tomorrow, um, Friday starts the 50th anniversary of Festival of the Arts. So back in the old days when it was the only thing happening, um, now there's way too much happening. Um, so hopefully you find some time to head on downtown and you can see the former Commissioner Volkowski um, selling kielbasa and pierogi. It'll be worth the trip. It'll be worth the trip. <laughs> so thank you all. Hey, anyone else? All right, seeing none, we are adjourned. Our next meeting date is June 18th.
I am Kent County. I am Kent County. I am Kent County. We are 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 Kent County. Bayah Kent County. Ami Kent County. Somos Kent County. Masira Kent County. We are Kent County. We are Kent County. Oh yeah.